Hey gang, Mocha Boy here. Welcome back, and thanks for tuning back in. So uh, we've got a pretty cool episode today. Um, as a part of the Naze 32 repair uh, video repair series I'm putting out, uh, I'm going to walk you through how to diagnose the board, how to how to troubleshoot the, the board, you know, figure out which components are broken, and then how to remove the components, how to resolder the components, all of that fun stuff. So what we have on the desk today is a collection of uh, all the controllers that I have that are on my desk. These were all donated by uh, fellow pilots. Uh, you know, some of the guys in the Morphite thread, so, you know, the hat tip to John Barter and my kinds. Uh, you, thank you so much for sending me on a, a, these mullet flight controllers. It really, really helped to, to, you know, have or not have to worry about uh, what happened to the board, uh, you know, as you were going through and um, trying to figure out what was wrong with it. The good news is, is that, you know, there, it's all solid state machinery, so, so long as the traces are intact, uh, all of the boards are, are more or less re replaceable or repairable, uh, for, you know, for different things. So what we're going to talk about today is how to get this chip off the board without destroying the board in the process. Now in the past, uh, I have done I have done that using a, a hot air gun, but um, I found something that's worked extremely well and I think is more in the range of uh, you know your your average uh, you know repair guy. And that's this stuff here. It's a Chip Quick SMD rework um, solder. This is a special formulation of solder that stays liquid or molten rather longer than regular solder. So when you pull your, your iron off, it'll continue to stay molten for probably a good about four or five seconds. So, um, you know, the general idea here is you, you'll flux up the, the pins, uh, drop a dab of this on there, and then just, you know, keep rotating around the chip until everything's heated up, and then the chip will just pop off. And I'm going to show you guys how, how I did that. The boards on the right-hand side here, the, from, the pink, uh, from the pink one over, these were all repaired. Uh, they all required new chips, new um, new voltage regulators, new diodes, you know, a host of different issues. The boards on the right, um, this one has the chip removed, and these two, this one's a burnt chip, and then on this one here, oh, I'm sorry, this is the one with the burnt chip, you can see the little, uh, little burn mark right there. So this got a blast of 12 volts, which is unfortunate. Um, and then uh, this one's got a short somewhere in there. So we'll, you know, we'll spend some time diagnosing that. So we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about the tools that go into this. You know, don't be, um, don't don't get intimidated by by any of this. A lot of this stuff is is more or less available for, for uh, you know just a small investment. And even if you're not the guy that that's going to be doing this, uh, someone in your in your flight club or local uh, you know local pilots uh, group will, will have the ability to do this. Um, what I tried to do was come up with a few ways to do this without incurring you know without having to go out and buy like this exotic machinery. Um, the only thing that is it, that is uh, I would say mandatory is you'll need some sort of an inspection tool. And if you can't afford a stereo microscope, which I mean, I have on my, on my bench, but you know, it's only because I enjoy doing this, then you'll need at least something like a micro, uh, you know, USB microscope because you need to be able to see what you're doing and you need to be able to inspect your work and check for shorts and things like that. And you know, these USB microscopes are pretty much the only way that, that you can do that. So let's talk a little bit about the, um, let's talk a little bit about the machinery or the equipment here. Um, one of the things that I have, this is a new thing on my desk. Uh, this is the Mastec MS8232B, I'm sorry, uh, digital multimeter. Now this is an auto-ranging multimeter and it's also smaller than the, uh, than the X-Tech that I have. I use both of them, but um, what's really nice about this is apart from the fact that it's auto-ranging, it only takes AA batteries versus the 9 volt, um, but it also has a capacitance checker. This is one of the first models that I've seen that allows you to take uh, a capacitor and then measure the capacitance of that capacitor. And this is important for, you know, if you're trying to identify a part and you don't know what the value is, you just pop off a known working part, measure it, and then uh, and then replace it. So this is like a $25 multimeter, so really, really fantastic buy there. Um, this is another cool thing that I found. Uh, this is a, a, a chip or a PCB holder. You can find these on eBay, like if you do a search for phone or, or PCB repair. This is a spring-loaded holder, so you know that keeps this nice and mobile, immobile while you work on it. Just be careful that, uh, and bear in mind that these are metal prongs. So, uh, specifically these two pads right there, you never want to, never want to do something like this because now you're bridging power to ground. So something to consider there. Um, moving right along, replacement parts. These are, uh, these are STM32 F F103s. These are some diodes. Uh, I'll have all these parts in the, in the description so that you can see what you need to buy. 3.3 um, 3, 3 voltage 
uh, 3.3 volt voltage regulators, and then some Schottky diodes they have around here. Let's see. Yeah, these are the uh, the Schottky diodes. And again, I'll, I'll I'll pop in these these parts at a later time. But um, yeah, these are typically the the things that break on the board when when whenever anything goes wrong. So moving right along, you're definitely you're definitely going to want some some solder braid. Uh, this is what I use. You can buy these in bulk on eBay, like 10 bucks for five, five of these. Uh, for flux paste, and this is kind of the secret sauce for a lot of the soldering work that I do. I, I use three different types, but the more that I use this, the more that I, the more I like it. You can buy this entire tub on Amazon for like 13 bucks. It's normally available for like 50 or 60 bucks, but um, you can you can buy this. This is enough to, to last you the your entire life and the life of your kids. Um, if you don't want to go out and get that much, you can spend 11 bucks on this, uh, you know, MG Chemicals flux paste. Um, this works really well. This is a more liquid flux paste, uh, flux, uh, liquid flux rather, and uh, I use this sparingly, but um, I've been using this more and more uh, for, for a lot of the work that I do. You also need a collection of brushes. This is, um, you know, just a regular acid brush. This is for for cleaning the boards of the flux, even though they are no clean, they leave a little bit of residue. So, you know, typically you want to take some isopropyl alcohol and then just brush that off and then let these dry. And then obviously the uh, the chip quick, I'll leave, you can buy this on DigiKey. It's like, uh, I don't know, 10 bucks for, for this. And this will last you for a really long time. Um, for tips, uh, I use a range of different tips. This is a screwdriver, this two millimeter screwdriver tip. This is a conical tip. I think this is the ET. I'll, you know, I'll put the links down to this. Uh, this is handy for, you know, if you've got to get in and do like a QFN package, I mean, look how, look how small that, that point is. But uh, my workhorse is this. This is the uh, ETCC. It's a single edge Weller, Weller tip. And then obviously you're going to want a good soldering iron. I use a Weller West 51, um, but I also have a, a bunch of other uh, cool toys that, that I can work with here. Um, for, for solder, I use just a, reg, a standard 60-40 blend, nothing too crazy there. A pair of curved tweezers. This helps for, um, you know, just the ergonomics of being able to pull off, uh, pull off the chips. Um, oh, and one of the other things that I have on my bench, um, I'll, I'll show you a picture of this, but it's the X-Power 853D. It's a 3-in-1 uh, hot air rework station, but one of the things that's really, really handy about this is that it comes with an adjustable power supply. So you can dial in 5 to 15 volts up to 1 amp, and then, you know, you can use this to power your electronics. So you may see, the, you may see these pop in uh, on camera every now and again to, to power the boards. So um, the, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was programming the chip, because once you get the chip on, um, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, this is the way that I know how to do it. This is the STM32F4 discovery board, uh, or F3 discovery board, F1 discovery board. Um, this comes with the, these programming headers right here. This is an SWD interface that plugs in underneath here into three pins on, on these sets of pads. This allows you low-level access to the I.O. and clock pins directly on, on the STM32. So you can push firmware directly into there using this. There is a way to do it over USB, uh, but I haven't, um, I haven't researched that yet. Somebody brought it to my attention the other day, being able to, uh, to flash the chip over over a serial UART connection, but um, I'm going to show you how to do it this way because uh, this is the way that I know, and then we'll um, you know, we'll talk about uh, some of the other options later. But um, so yeah, let's let's go ahead and you know again, don't be intimidated when it comes down to um, you know working on the the the, uh, the chip. It's it's actually not that bad, and the whole process only takes a, a few minutes. You'll actually spend more time putting it back on than you will taking it off. So. Let me just get everything set up and then I will be right back. So this is our patient here. We've got uh, the STM32 with that fancy little burn mark right there. Uh, this little guy got um, a blast of 12 volt in from the battery sense port, unfortunately, but uh, shouldn't be too shouldn't be too terrible to to, to fix this. So let's see. <clears throat> first things first. Uh, we'll go we'll go ahead and just get some flux on these pads. There. This is just a tiny little electronics brush. You, you, you can find these in electronics stores or on eBay. Usually buy these like in a pack of like 25 or 30. And uh, don't worry about getting too much on. Uh, this is this is going to help the um, the chip quick adhere. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and fluxed all the uh, the pins, and now all we have to do is just get a tiny little bit of the solder right on the pins. So don't worry about uh, you know getting it molten at this point. We'll we'll go back and touch up all the uh, pins shortly. Just get it on there, and then. Uh, You don't need a lot. This is about as much as you'll need. Okay, so once you've got enough compound on the pins, enough to flood all of the pins, all you have to do is go in with your soldering iron and heat everything up. And like I said, you've got about four, maybe five seconds of working time. So provided you got every pin covered, uh, then you should be in good shape. But um, just one thing to note is don't force the chip. If it's not going to come off cleanly, then uh, then don't pull it because you if you try to pull it off uh, prematurely, you will you will pull a trace and then you, you're going to have a bad day. So that's it, and it just pops right off. So once once that's done, that's where the um, the solder braid comes in, and you'll go in and clean up these pads. And again, if if you feel it, if you feel the uh, the braid starting to stick, don't try to pull it. Don't try to tug it because you will. You will pull a trace and um, you will destroy the board at that point. So if, if, it's, um, if you find yourself in a situation where the braid's getting stuck, get a little extra flux, uh, just flux the braid, and then uh, you know, just give it a blast of heat and you should be in good shape. But uh, you know, if you feel it stick at all, don't, um, don't pull it. <laughs> so yeah, now this step is important because um, we need to make sure that the, the, the pads are all clear. And uh, when we install the new chip, that everything sits flush. So really, really important to make sure that you get all of the flux off without destroying any of the, uh, the nearby components. So we're just going to give this a little bit more cleaning just to make sure. I mean, this is tough because I'm not doing this under the microscope. Uh, otherwise, I'd be able to see pretty, pretty easily if, uh, if there was any solder left on the pads. And, and again, if you if you don't get all the solder off, what's going to end up happening is one of the pins will ride higher than the rest, and it'll be really difficult to get uh, good contact for all of the other pins once you reseat the um, the new chip. So that's it. Um, so I've got the um, the board cleaned up. I've got the uh, the chip removed. I, I took some a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and uh, just rubbed that off so that we have a clean chip to work on. Now what I'm, what I'm gonna do is, while the chip is off, we need to just double check that the power components work because the last thing you wanna do is realize that there's a problem with one of them and then have to back out and, and change those later. So I've got um, my five volt power supply ho hooked in. Red goes to that middle rail, black goes to that, that rail right there. And um, you see that blue light pop on for just a second. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probe this pin. This is, um, let me just shut this off. Uh, just really quickly, this is the 5 volt rail, which goes into the Schottky diode, and then that's the input pin for the 5 volt rail. Should get about 4.8 volts out of that pin. That pin feeds the input pin of the voltage regulator right over here, bottom right hand corner, and then that outputs 3.3 volts on that pin to the rest of the board. So we're going to probe. Um, th this is also one of the troubleshooting steps because uh, typically when you blow one of these boards, uh, this this chip or this component here is usually the first to go, and then sometimes the voltage regulator. Um, if you see something weird with like uh, half a volt, or or if the board starts to heat up at this point, that means there's a short somewhere else in the chip, and you're going to have to work that out before proceeding any further. So I'm just going to send turn that on 5.5 volts. And then just uh, just take a look in the the meter on the side. So getting 5.05 volts. That goes into this diode, which gets me 4.8 volts, which is right. Let me see, I have to switch hands here. That goes into the input pin of the voltage regulator, which is again, 4.86 volts. And then we're gonna check the output pin on this side. And that gives me my 3.3 volts right there. 
So all of these components are checked out. Um, you will also find 3.3 volts coming out of this pin right here. Uh, nothing coming out of that diode there, but um, uh, th these these diodes, these connection diodes, are, are hooked into the uh, into the CP2102 chip. But we don't have to worry about any of those. Uh, nevertheless, they are interesting to, to check just in case there are problems. If you are going to run, all of the power is handled out of these components over here. Uh, you'll definitely want to check these components at some point, but these are are definitely the ones to focus on. So um, we know that the uh, the chips work. So we'll go ahead and uh, grab another replacement STM32 and pop that on back in there. So uh, let's see. Go ahead and grab your your replacement STM32. I'm down to two of them. Uh oh. And the first thing we're going to do is just talk about the orientation of the chip. So I like to work in this orientation with the servo pads uh, down here, the the motor output pads, and then in that orientation. See this little, see that little dot right there on top of the die? That's the um, that's your indication of pin one. So that's what the orientation looks like. The, the process goes something like this. You, uh, you flex the, the corner, tack it down. This is your last opportunity at that point to reposition it to make sure that it's, it's um, flush and lined up, registered with all of the other traces. And then we're gonna flip it around, tack the other side, and then once we're happy, then we go in and we drag solder all the remaining pins. So, and this is kind of the maddening part of the process. It's, uh, you know, I definitely wouldn't do this in a high stress environment. <laughs> and just make sure you're focused in a quiet place and, uh, you know, no distractions. All right, so that looks about right. The bottom alignment's a hair off, but I'm not too worried about that. Okay. So once you're happy, Go ahead and get a little uh, solder on your tip. I'm using my two millimeter tip. And then we're gonna... Just tack down that one leg. And then, like I said, you know, if you can, if you can tack down that one leg, that gives you a lot of flexibility to, to play around with the alignment on the other side. But once you get the second leg down, that's it. You're, in, you're pretty much past the point of no return. So. And, you know, you, you don't get any points for being a hero here. If you don't like the alignment of it, um, you know, just start over. For this, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and tack this down, make this permanent, and should have a fully seated chip. So once you're once you get to that point, again, just take a quick look, make sure you're happy with the alignment, and then uh, and then we can get started. So this, this is where let me let's explain a little bit of how this works. Uh, the, one of the keys to work, one of the keys to doing this drag soldering is going to be um, fluxing all of the pins, making sure there's like an ample, ample amount on there. Don't don't be shy. And then we're going to get a small dollop of um, solder on the tip, and then we're going to use the uh, the surface tension properties of that molten solder to just heat up the pins, and then the the heated up pins will draw in as much solder as they need. Now, one of the things that is going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, when you're doing this is that you're more than likely going to short a couple of these pins in the process. Uh, you don't sweat it. You can go in and clean them up a little bit later. And I'll, I'm hoping it actually happens now so I can show you uh, how to fix that. But a little bit of braid and a whole lot of flux and you'll be able to clean up those shorts uh, with without too much trouble. I mean really the, the trick here is just um, making sure you get an appropriate amount of solder on and that everything is seated properly. So... Let me zoom in a little bit and we'll get to work. And that's it. See, that's that's how that drag works. You just get a little bit of solder on. 
on the tip, and the uh, the pins will pull off whatever they need, and that's how you use a really really big fat tip to uh, to apply <laughs> solder to these really super fine super fine legs. So we'll do it again on this side. Actually, we'll go in this direction. Okay, good. So we, we got a few shorts on this one. That's all right. I will show you how to fix those when we go back. Actually, or I'll fix them right now. <laughs> so yeah, part of the problem here was I probably had just a little bit too much solder on the tip and uh, a few of them ended up pulling uh, a little extra. But the, this is easy to fix. Um, grab a little extra flux. Just drop it right there. And pull it off. That's one more pin fixed. And if I can't get this off in the next uh, minute or so, well, I'll just go in with a little bit of braid and just draw it right out. Yeah, let me do that. So I've got my solder braid. Just give it a quick tap. And that should be enough to pull it off. All right, looking good. Now, you know, this is tricky because of um, you know, the weird parallax effect. I didn't notice that these were slightly misaligned. Uh, normally, again, I'd be doing this under a microscope and, you know, I'd, I'd have the precision that I need. But um, so just take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, the side's definitely not as, um, not as aligned as I would like. But again, so long as you're not shorting, you're not shorting pins, then it's, uh, it's not a big deal. This is really tricky to do on a TV screen. So we got a few shorts there, no problem. Just go in and fix this up. That's, that's pretty simple to fix, provided you have the right tools. And that should take care of that. Okay, so. That's all the pins. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this under the microscope and just double check to make sure that uh, I don't have any shorts anywhere else. And then we'll come back and I'll uh, we'll wrap this up. So just a quick note. I um, <laughs> I wasn't happy with the alignment of it, so uh, I cheated a little bit and, and hopped on the hot air gun. You know, gave it a give it a 30 or 40 second blast and just uh, you know kind of teased it into position. So um, I wanted to make sure I didn't uh, you know cause any problems for myself later on the, down the line. And obviously, you know, you, you would, you hopefully would be doing this with some sort of powered magnification so you could see and verify the alignment of everything before locking everything down. Uh, but uh, once you get to that point, um, everything's seated properly and we'll go ahead and do a, a power-up test. So uh, one of the other things I did want to mention, you know, again, hot air gun versus chip quick. I really like the chip quick for, for these types of operations because I don't have to go in and uh, depin the board before I work on it. In the past, I used used to end up spending like 30 minutes depinning the board, uh, you know, just so that I could do a little five minute repair, and uh, it just created a huge mess. But with um, one of the other things that would happen is if if you tried to hit this with a hot air gun, you'd end up melting these plastic headers in in a lot of cases, unless you shielded them. Uh, but it, you know, it was just more of a pain in the butt than than anything else. So the, the chip quick allows you to get in with a very very controlled amount of uh, heat in just the right areas that you need and then you can pop those chips off really quickly there and, 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 and easily without um, overheating or damaging the board in any, uh, in any way. So very, very handy there. 
So that's what the final product looks like. Um, I, I did end up hitting this, this chip with a little bit of heat uh, from the hot air gun because I just was not happy with that alignment issue. Uh, you know, just 30 or 40 seconds under the heat gun and I was able to kind of tap it into position. And then I went in and uh, cleaned up the solder joints after that. Um, you know, just after verifying under the microscope that there were no shorts. So at this point, again, uh, just to review, you verified that uh, this diode is operational, that um, that voltage regulator is operational, that you're getting about 4.89 volts out of there, out of a 5 volt uh, supply, and that you're getting about 3.3 volts out of that pin from that voltage regulator. And if you did everything right, when you go to power everything up, if you get that blue light, uh, then, then you're in good shape and we're ready to move on to, uh, to the next bit, which we'll handle in the next episode. I'm going to show you how to wire this up and uh, push firmware onto the board. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you thought that was interesting. And uh, see you on the next show.